Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel. So if you're new here, my name's Sean and today we're going to be talking about raising sheep for beginners. So we're going to go all the way from uh, picking which sheep are best for you and then how to care for sheep. Anyway guys, let's get into this video. So one of the first and most important things is picking uh, the right sheep. So there's over 200 different breeds of sheep in the world and here in the UK we have about 110 registered breed societies. And picking the right sheep for your circumstances is a, a big part of caring for sheep. So we could really subcategorize sheep all day long but we're going to put them into three main categories for this video and the first of those categories is going to be primitive sheep so what you see behind me here these are hebridean sheep they come from the outer hebridean islands of scotland and they would be what is categorized as primitive sheep so primitive sheep is sheep that have been largely unchanged for thousands of years so sheep are a completely domesticated animal they appeared first in scotland over about 7,000 years ago, uh, we have evidence of sheep farming. And primitive sheep are similar to the sheep you would have found way back then. And other breeds would include sort of beret, soy, and it, you'll notice a lot of these sheep are named after Scottish islands, the islands that they originate from. These sheep tend to be extremely hardy. They are primarily used on very rough, or very unproductive ground and they tend to be a lot smaller with colored wool and horns uh, than other sheep so these sheep here are probably fully grown at about 40 kilograms 35 40 kilograms for females uh, they tend to be horned colored wool and super super hardy they require very little input or extra care they require almost very little to no extra feeding, uh, especially on ground like this. This is way too good for this type of sheep. So these sheep would generally be found in the outer Hebridean islands, uh, Scottish islands, or on mountains. Like I say, primitive sheep are sheep which have been largely unchanged over the last th few thousand years. So these are very similar to what people would have farmed thousands of years ago. Primitive breeds tend to be less profitable and you'll see them less farmed in a commercial sense. Quite a lot of the time primitive breeds will be hobby farmers or farmers who are starting out and aiming to breed up or uh, so, uh, in other words you could breed one of these to a bigger ram and you get a semi profitable lamb but they aren't heavily used in farming they will generally more be a sort of hobby sheep, a stutter sheep, that kind of thing. We move on to hill breeds. So these are like your blackies, your North Country Sheviates. These are going to be the most popular sheep you're going to find here in Scotland. And hill sheep, it says it in the name, they tend to be a sheep that is on rougher grazing. So big expanses of land, hill land, rough land, moorland, mountainsides. They again require very little input. They are a bit bigger than your primitive breeds. So 80 kilos maybe, uh, sort of 60 to 80 kilos maybe, sort of for your fully grown female. They tend to be more profitable. Uh, they are quite hardy sheep in general and they will require less input again. So uh, they do require some input, very little extra feeding uh, or none at all depending on the type of ground that you're raising them on and they tend to lamb themselves, they tend to be hardy, they tend not to have many illnesses uh, and again black faced sheep are probably going to be the most popular sheep here in Scotland. We have a lot of hill land, a lot of rough grazing, a lot of mountainsides, mountain ranges. So you might not see them from the road, but once you start heading up onto the back roads and the hill roads, you're gonna see a lot of black faced sheep. Also the most common type of sheep farming that you're gonna find here in Scotland. Hill farms tend to have a lot of sheep. Uh, sort of Scottish hill land, rough grazing land is perfect for these type of sheep and we actually have more sheep here in Scotland than we have people. 
so we really do raise a lot of sheep here and the majority of those sheep will be hill sheep and even though the hills may look rough uh, have bad weather and stuff like that it's the perfect place for these sort of hill breeds of sheep they really thrive in our scottish hill land we have the more commercial type sheep so these are texels bell texas suffix so big sheep big heavy sheep big profitable sheep uh, sheep which are going to have lambs they're going to grow very fast they're going to put on weight fast they're going to be profitable uh, you're going to sell a lot of those lambs so uh, into the meat trade type of thing that's what we farm here on, up in uh, the uh, farm itself so a lot of our sheep are actually cross sheep so they're cross beltex texel cross beltex suffolk type sheep and we do have some other sheep like mules and things mixed in there um, so so these commercial type sheep they're a lot more intensive uh, they require a lot more care so a good example here is i've worked in both hill farms and obviously in a commercial farm here and on a hill farm we are probably only assisting about 10 percent of a uh, sheep lambing in the in the lambing season whereas with these big commercial sheep you're assisting about 50 percent of them a uh, big commercial sheep are more a sort of parkland sheep so nice big lush grass fields like we see here nice big flat fields softer ground ground where the uh, is producing a higher quality and volume of grass to support a much bigger sheep they are also more intensive in their care so they do tend to be more susceptible to illnesses uh, and things like that as well so even though they're a bigger stronger looking sheep they can be a softer sheep uh, there are many different breeds that fall into all these categories but these are your main categories and these are kind of what you want to consider so what land do you have so it's what type of sheep and how intensive of a regime are you looking to run and also what are you looking to sort of get from your sheep are you looking to get into farming and looking for a more profitable sheep or are you hobby farming and maybe suiting a more primitive type sheep it's getting really windy and then there is expense so your primitive sheep are very cheap to run very little care i didn't give mine any feeding this winter at all so they were just fed on the grass that they had here and they did fine uh, hill sheep roughly the same maybe a little tiny bit more expensive you may need to feed them just before lamb and things like that but again very little amounts of feed to none uh, these big parkland sheep that were uh, farming on the actual farm here they're much more expensive they require more medical care they require uh, quite a bit of feeding in the winter time to get them through when the grass is low and they just require a bit more work a bit more knowledge and a bit more experience with sheep no matter what type of sheep that you are thinking of getting there are certain things that are going to need to be done so one of these is shearing so there are a few breeds of sheep which would be classed as shedding sheep so they'll shed their wool naturally personally i'm not too into them i think it just makes a big mess you have a whole load of wool flying about your fields and stuck to fence lines i don't like it I prefer to shear sheep. You will have to shear your sheep. Shearing is done for welfare. So, uh, first off, it's it's hot with all that wool on in the middle of summer. Today it's not that hot. It's like 14 degrees, but we'll be shearing these in the next week or so. So, uh, yeah, sheep have to be sheared. It will protect them from fly strikes. So flies in the summertime love sheep's wool to lay eggs in. They hatch out into maggots. So the maggots eat the sheep. So very important that you are going to shear them other big things with sheep so you will get sheep especially hill sheep which will be acclimatized so you may see something like tick acclimatized so these are sheep that have been brought up and selectively bred in areas with high ticks so they've come acclimatized to ticks which means they're more resistant to whatever they're acclimatized to but uh in general you will have to after shearing give your ewes some sort of pour on or dip for flies and fly strike you will also want to do your lambs probably a bit earlier probably round about the end of may you'd want to get some sort of protection onto your lambs worming you're going to worm uh, through certain parts of the year probably two to three times a year and uh, the likes of here in scotland fluke 
liver fluke, which is another parasite which attacks the liver, very prevalent. So we are uh, dosing our sheep for liver fluke every year. And again, this all depends to what is in your country, what is in your area. So coccidiosis, I'm not sure if I said that right. It's a very hard word to say, but uh, it can affect sheep. We don't seem to get too many problems with that, but that's another parasite that can affect sheep. Foot rot, we don't get a lot of foot rot here. Over in wetter areas, you will get a lot of foot rot. That may be something you have to deal with. And again, certain breeds, like your primitive sheep and your hill sheep will be hardier and deal with these things a lot better. The likes of your big commercial sheep, they are going to be affected by these things a lot more. But uh, especially worms can affect sheep quite bad. So it's important that you're, you're doing something for worms and that you're doing something for flies and fly strike in the summer. There are also a few uh, registered breeds of sheep which can only be achieved through crossing and these will be mules. So the most famous one here, and we've got a few of these, is Scotch mules, really good commercial sheep. Uh, so it is a blue faced Leicester, which is a very big fancy sheep uh, crossed with a hill sheep, called, uh, crossed with a black faced sheep, which is a hill sheep and it takes on the traits of both those. So it's hardier than most commercial sheep, but it also has the potential to produce lambs like a commercial sheep. Um, if you breed a Scotch mule to a Scotch mule, you will get an inferior sheep. If you breed a blue faced Leicester to a, uh, a black faced sheep, you'll get a Scotch mule. If you're wanting to hobby farm, you don't want to get a pure Beltex and then have to do lots and lots of work. If you're also working somewhere else, you maybe want something more like this. Whereas if you're looking to make profit, you're not really wanting one of these. You're wanting something bigger that's going to produce a profitable lamb. The thing you have to consider is feeding. Now, it's brilliant in the summertime if you have lots of grass, but you have to consider through the winter as well. So these little sheep here, like I say, they require very little extra feeding and they can pretty much live on fresh air and goodwill through the winter. A lot of sheep, a lot of these big commercial sheep anyway, you're going to have to feed them something at the winter, whether that's uh, silage, to make up for the lack of growth in grass. The grass never stops growing here in Scotland and it's why we're so good at creating sheep because we're uh, such a good country at growing grass, but it does definitely slow down. And even our commercial sheep, they require a bit of silage, a bit of extra grass to get them through. And then on the sort of couple of months run up to lamb and they'll also be getting rolls, which is a, a concentrated sheep feed, which comes in pellets about that size. And that is fairly expensive. Really, uh, depending on how big and the type of sheep that you've got, you may have to feed through the winter. You may have to uh, either buy in or create your, your own winter food supply, i.e. silage, hay, uh, haylage, those sort of things. To look at how much care each sheep takes. So little sheep like this and then your hill sheep require very little care. They're designed to live out in Scottish islands, Scottish hills and mountains and moorlands. They're pretty much designed to be kicked out and look after themselves uh, and only be looked or checked maybe a couple of times a week. Whereas these big commercial sheep, they require more care, they require checking all the time, they require a bit more experience in identifying problems and things like that. And that's fine if you want to get a vet all the time, but what we do here is we will only really get a vet if we require our sheep to get an operation. Pretty much everything else we can diagnose and treat by ourselves, but that takes experience and it takes some knowledge in sheep. So what I would say, if you're looking to get into sheep and you're looking for a good starter sheep, get a Shetland. A Shetland is sort of in between a primitive and a hill sheep. They breed up very well, so you can put a Shetland will be about 40 kilos fully grown. You could put a Shetland female to a big commercial ram and that 40 kilo female will produce you 80 kilos of lamb, no problem. They tend to require a lot less care, a lot less feed, but still profitable type sheep. Like I say, with the sort of two paddocks I have here, probably amounts to about four acres and I've got about nine sheep on four acres. So I've actually got quite a lot of sheep on this bit of ground, but it's because they're smaller sheep. So that's another thing you have to fi figure out is even on parkland, these big commercial sheep, it's about one sheep to one acre. Whereas smaller sheep, I could actually put more sheep on here and it'd be fine. You can see how 
but we've come down here. Ignore the thistles, they're not meant to be here, but you can see you can see we're overloaded with grass that these sheep are probably not managing this grass in here. We could probably have another five in here. So that's another thing you want to consider is how big is the ground you've got and how heavily do you want to graze it. At the end of the day, these are dog trained sheep. Uh, these paddocks aren't really used that much, so it's not that important that they're, they're grazed too properly. The thing to be aware of is all different breeds of sheep have different temperaments. So these uh, primitive sheep especially tend to be very wild. Okay, so they're, they're less domesticated in, in, a, in a sense. They tend to be a bit quicker, a bit more, tend to like to run around a bit more, which makes them brilliant dog trained sheep. They also tend to split up a lot more when they're being herded, which again makes them a good challenge as a dog training sheep because it teaches dogs to keep them together. If you're a beginner, and you, you maybe haven't got a dog or something like that, they're probably a bit harder to control. Uh, whereas the big park sheep tend to move a bit slower. They tend to be a bit more domesticated, a bit more sort of okay with humans being around. They not quite as wild, not quite as hard to work with. Definitely some of these primitive and hill breeds of sheep can be quite wild and quite hard to work with, especially when you're handling them or in other words, giving them their doses for worms and things like that. They can jump around a bit, be a bit more mobile, jump over fences. Now, commercial sheep can be like, like that too, but it is not as common. They do not generally jump, run around and jump about as much. Now, they are sheep and sheep are prey animals. So they're going to run around a lot and be a bit wild anyway. But the commercial sheep sometimes can be a bit easily or to handle, even though they're bigger. Whereas these guys tend to have a little bit more fight in them. And then back to, so how do we make profit off sheep? What is the sellability or the farmability of them? So the first thing that comes to most people's mind is wool. Don't think you're going to make profit off of wool. Wool is worthless. And I don't mean to be mean about that, but I mean, we shear a lot of sheep and we get less than 40 quid for all the wool. It costs more money to shear sheep than it does uh, than the money you'll get back from selling them unfortunately but in the last 10 years or so uh, man-made polyesters and things like that have really just taken over and there's no real market for wool anymore so there are two ways that sheep can be profitable one is selling sheep for food and uh, we a lot of lamb here in Britain and the rest of Europe compared to other parts of the world so uh, selling sheep for can be quite profit uh, for food or meat can be quite profitable here and then the other way is selling breeding quality sheep to other farmers so let's just say i got a good ram put them in with these produce some good females i could then go sell those females to other farmers for them to produce lambs out of them nice we could probably go on to this subject for hours and hours and talk about all the different breeds of sheep and how they're all different and what they all do but we'd literally be here for days. So I hope that gives a little bit of insight into the thinking and how you're gonna to have to care for your sheep. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe because it helps push the channel and the algorithm. And that'll do it for today's video. So thank you very much for watching.